Welcome back. Well, as I said at the beginning, we have kind of a spooky, scary theme going today. We're going to keep it going with our next guest. They wrote a book in time for Halloween called The Science of Serial Killers. Please welcome to the show authors Meg and Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we were just talking about... <laughs> We've been talking about serial killers for about 40 minutes. What is uh, what is the focus of this particular book? It's it's this really it's the title. It's the science behind them, right? Right. Yeah. We we wanted to take kind of a different approach. There's so much true crime out there, and this is our fourth book in the Science of series. So we've written about fictional monsters, and we wanted to get into more of the the real deal monsters. And what are some of the traits that I mean? We were talking about that with Maria. What are some of the traits that you found run through a, a good number of them. Something that's really scary, uh, we were talking about the, that triangle, is that sometimes there's made killers. So you could be born a killer and have those psychological aspects, but sometimes it's your childhood and how you're brought up. And that's really scary and terrifying. We even have some environmental things going on in our book that we talk about science um, because Serial killing is down 85% in the last three decades. So there has to be a reason for that. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think I knew. It's, it's down how much? 85% in the last three decades. When yeah. was the highest? Was it the 70s? When, yep, when you think it was. Yes, exactly. When, yeah. And that's why a lot of us who grew up in that era just assumed, you know, a bad thing. There's a boogeyman around every corner. Yeah. My mom just thought I was going to you know, be kidnapped off the street. I think well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the 80s. I yeah, mean, I exactly. Just, well, I mean, yeah. that was the era of the slasher movie, too. Right. Mm -hmm. What 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 do the experts say? Is there a reason that they, is it because the, the research is better and it's spotting the potential Dahmers is easy? Er? Part of it, but I think let, we're going to give you a little spoiler for okay. a really interesting <laughs> chapter. Yeah. There's, there's actually evidence to show that lead in the environment could have something to do with it. And lead was at its highest, and kids were playing with toys that had lead in them, gasoline, of course. Yes, so the, that, there's actually evidence that that can cause violent crime, and it could have something to do, plus somebody who is already, you know, ready as far as genetics and things like that. So was, it's fascinating. I was going to say, because I, um, I was talking to somebody about, and you kind of answered it there, there are using the pun for, or not the pun, but the title of the movie, there are natural born killers, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. And then when they're put in an environment, you know, we talked to somebody, uh, Zach Via, the actor who played Richard Ramirez in American Horror Story, we talked to him and, you know, Richard Ramirez was sort of put in this position where how could he not be a serial killer when you hear about his childhood yeah. and things like that. So if there are environmental factors too, it's sort of uh, all these bad things, yeah, compounds. And I know one of the traits, and, and it's interesting now that we're living in the Instagram influencer era, but there is also a thread with a lot of these guys, there is a thread of wanting to be famous. Yeah, is that true? There is that we actually, three chapters we devote to uh, specifically serial killers who just did it for the fame. Mm -hmm. With no other motivation. Right. Well, well I mean, there's bit, always but... something there. We actually get into Leopold and Loeb, which um, Rope, the wonderful Alfred Hitchcock uh, film, is based on them. And these were two guys who they felt like they wanted to give it a try to become murderers. And, I love it. You know, it's like, let's just, let's <laughs> yeah, let's just, we're bored. Well, they were affluential, you know, guys who had everything at their fingertips and they decided that's they, the way they, they wanted to They felt so go. privileged that they thought they could get away with it. Yeah. I'll ask you the same question that I asked Maria, whether it's Bundy or any of the other subjects, even Jack the Ripper you guys look into, what was in the research something that just stood out to you that maybe, I mean, you're used to this type of material that shocked you or surprised you the most? I think the thing that surprised me the most was uh, a mo more recent case, Israel Keys. He did so much planning ahead of time in across countries and states in order to not get caught. And that's that's what we keep finding in all of our books. Truth is scarier than fiction. <laughs> yeah, like, the stuff true. that Hollywood produces is nothing compared to right, the, exactly. what's really going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. How many, do, do you guys know, I don't mean to put you on the spot with this, do, do we have a figure, have we wrapped our brain around how many active serial killers are, ha are, are right now? Well, I think, you know, it's certainly, like I said, it's a lot less than it used to be. And thankfully, you know, we interviewed a, a retired FBI agent and he talked about how difficult it is to find serial killers and how difficult it is to sort of track them and know how many. But I don't have the figure, but certainly a lot less than there used to be. So that's good news. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Told you there's going to be a silver lining today, folks. Okay, you guys talked about Jack the Ripper, too, probably. History says probably the first known or written about serial killer 
Anything interesting that we've learned in the last decade about Ripper that you guys learned? I think the, the big takeaway from the research from, for this book is just how he picked his victims, and it was the less dead, and that's people who aren't don't have that privilege or li yeah, where they live. That's a term used that we get into a lot, especially with Highway of Tears, um, uh, killings that happen in northern Canada, where people who are hitchhiking sex workers, people who are considered, you know, not, not your sort of um, college co-ed, and serial killers tend to go after those people who And even perhaps, Jack the Ripper did, even yep, though... Jack the Ripper did as yeah. well. You know, he went after people that weren't living in privileged lives, and um, it's a shame. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to read this. Kelly and Meg, everybody, The Science of Serial Killers is available right now wherever books, books are sold. And follow their podcast as well. Search for HorrorRewind.com. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Thank you so much. i got to listen to the podcast. Is it just on the...